I'm just tapping a hole here now, um, putting a thread in. I must admit I don't use the T-shaped thing, I just tend to use a pair of grips. Um, it's easy to come in, I just find it easier. I've got this, made this aluminium cover plate which will just go here um, with two bolts. Okay, so everything comes off and is easy to remove. Um, to cut these plates you can use uh, tin snips, um, which are okay on the thinner alloy. But I have to admit, um, um, these are just fabulous. It's called a nibbler, and it's got a tiny little, uh, I don't know if you can see that. There's a little thing that sort of goes up and down very fast in that groove, and it literally takes nibbles of uh, aluminium out, and it's just fantastic for cutting um, unusual shapes in aluminium. I've got a bit in the vise here, I'll just show you. It's like a knife through butter. Reasonably neat cut. There's my little cover plate just held in with two uh, bolts that you can uh, put in with Allen keys. Uh, there's another one here that I did earlier. So as you can see it's starting to look a bit like a well a cross between a unicycle and a model boat but um, never mind we've got our new handlebars on. Um, this is to mount the box on with the Arduino and the balance system in it got a master power cut off which needs to be mounted, uh, a row of batteries, uh, steering linkage and what I've been doing for the last since the last episode is trying, I don't know if you can see this, cramming in all the electronics and these rather bulky yeah, plug connectors of which the So here if we come back up to the top top end now um, you can see there's various wires running over here. This is uh, ground, um, this is the power lead, this is a gigantic fuse uh, inside this holder held on with some clamps. Um, this is the 0 to 5 volt line to tell the Kelly controller how much power and in what direction to send it to the motor. Um, we've also got dead man switch cables so they run along the frame here in the gap because the seat will come curved over here so which means there's a sort of space here where I can run cables through so that's quite handy um, you often forget to do that um, we come up to the front we've got our ugly but functional box which has PID uh, control on while you're actually riding it and overall gain on off switch for the Arduino, battery pack for the Arduino, uh, master power cut off just disconnects the batteries and there's a switch just under here which turns on the the brain of the Kelly controller if you uh, it's the easiest way to think of it. We've also got twist grip which is not a throttle it alters the balance set point of the machine um, so it can act as a throttle and uh, a brake lever from a Charles toy scooter. This is not a cable, it's an electronic switch. So uh, when you let go it cuts the power. There we go, there's a nice little row of connectors. Um, I'm just going to check the voltage to see if they're actually touching each other. Um, maybe a bit difficult with one hand. There we go. Hang on. There. Oops. 49 volts. Now you might wonder why is it showing 49 volts when the main power switch is off? The reason is, if you remember, there's a, uh, a 1000 ohm um, wire wound resistor across the terminals of this 
Um, the reason for that is it precharges the uh, capacitors in the Kelly controller. So otherwise, when you turned on the switch, um, the current inrush through these wires into the Kelly controller just for a, a fraction of a second would be hundreds and hundreds of amps, if not thousands of amps, and things can go bang and it shortens the life of the Kelly controller. So it's a small thing, but they do recommend that you do that in the Kelly controller instruction manual.